They say two is company and three is a crowd. On today's case, Mr. Henry says that he's concerned that one lover is not enough to keep his girlfriend satisfied, and that's a problem. He says that while she craves an alternative lifestyle, he's content being a one-woman man and has no interest in sharing his hopefully future wife with other women. Today, he wants her to choose if she wants to keep company with him or if their relationship will be lost in the crowd. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Henry versus DeRossier. Excellent. Thank you so very much. Mr. Henry, Ms. DeRossier. Mr. Henry, you've opened this case today because you say monogamy is very important to you. The problem is that you suspect Ms. DeRossier may be exploring other options, and you are here in my court with an ultimatum. Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. DeRossier, you say Mr. Henry is indeed your soulmate, and you're here to prove to him that no one is coming between the two of you. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so let me figure this out. You guys met in high school, if I'm not mistaken, correct, Mr. Henry? Yes. And you've been living together for three years, and although you have no two-legged children, you do have a four-legged uh, fur child, uh, Smokey, am I right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Henry, why don't you tell me why we're in court today? We're in court today for me to give Ferry an uh, ultimatum, and basically, um, I just feel like I'm enough for her. Like, I don't feel like she needs to be exploring into other options or whatnot. And basically, like, you know, I love her. I have every intentions of marrying her. And, you know, I just want to let her know, like, it's either you're going to pick me or you're going to pick this alternative lifestyle, which I'm not, you know. Okay, it's like either I'm enough and we start to build or I'm about to build somewhere else, basically. Correct. Okay, Mr. Ross, you heard what Mr. Henry say. What say you? Well, Your Honor, he, he's re he really brought me here because he thinks that I have a girlfriend on the side, and that is not the truth at all. I love him. That's, like, my man, and... This is a committed relationship for you. Yes, although I do believe in alternative lifestyles and, you know, things no like judgment. that. No he, he was okay. Was on, he was on board with it. It was fine. It didn't seem to bother him. So now it's coming as a shock to me. He would think that I would go beyond that and introduce somebody into our relationship knowing that he's not completely on board with it. So let us explore where we are in this relationship and whether or not we can all come to common ground on it, okay? Yes, well, why don't you take me back, Mr. Henry? I know you all met in high school, but how did that whole thing get down? Well, basically, we was in the same class in high school and, you know, it was math class. Okay. And she was having problems with math so she asked me, like, if I could help her out with math. Long story short, I became her tutor. Okay. And, you know, basically, I was just helping her out with math, tests, everything, studying, all, you know, the whole nine yards. But you all were contemporaries. You're around the same age. One right. is 29 and one is 30. You all start seeing each other, and you've been together as a couple now for three years. Correct. Okay. So tell me what you had as an expectation for the relationship when it became romantic. Well... Of course, you know, like, I give her my all, so basically I expect the same. And I don't share or I don't go out and try to find any other people to bring into the relationship. Are you completely monogamous, Mr. Henry? Yes, of okay. course. Okay. And faithful to Mr. Rossier? Of course. 100%? Yes. Okay, so you're saying you want that kind of relationship? Exactly. And what's the problem? Does Ms. Uh, De Rossier like something different? Well, she likes women, of course. So, you know, she wants to bring in other women into the relationship. But I just know that it's going to bring toxicity into, you know, the relationship. We tried it before, and it just didn't work. I want to go through some of that. It sounds like you're giving her a bit of an ultimatum. Uh, Mr. Rossier, I can imagine that doesn't feel comfortable for you. Am I right? Yes, Your Honor, you're correct. It doesn't feel comfortable, but... He expressed that he didn't have an issue with it in the beginning of our relationship. So, in other words, you let him know early on... Yes. ...that you were into yeah. alternative lifestyles? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I let him know. And he was okay with it, which is part of the reason why all the more I, I fell in love with him. Okay, so, Mr. Henry, I'm a little concerned. I know one of the biggest issues is bringing other people into the relationship. How did that whole thing come up? Because Mr. Rossier says you knew that she was into an alternative well, lifestyle. Well, yes. Better. Yes, of course. I gave it a try. I'm not gonna say I didn't. 
Because, you know, I love her. I want to make sure she's pleased. You know, I'm a man. Man is going to make sure that his woman is pleased no matter what. So she tells me, oh, this woman, me and her have been conversating for a while. And she told me straight up, like, she want both of us. And I'm like, OK, let's see where it goes. So we tried it. And, you know, the chick had everything planned out. She picked us up, brought her to the house, had rose petals on the floor, dinner, everything. I'm like, OK, she went in. So, all right, whatever. I'll, I'll feed into her efforts. So basically, you know, we ate. And we ate. I'm a person, I give credit where it's due. Her food was good. So I told her, I said, yo, the food was good. Thank you for having us. And she says, oh, well, tomorrow I'm a cook. I'm like, what? Like, why you, like, why yeah, you have to say I that? I know him. I know and he didn't like it. That chicken was dry. Anyways, the girl, she said, y'all can either sleep in the guest room where I have planned, I mean, prepared for y'all, or y'all can sleep in my room. It's up to y'all. So I said, it's up to Ferry. So she chose her room. So I'm like, I tell her, you, I was like, you sure? Because, you know, you're already with the dinner. You're already, you're already you know. salty. So she was like, nah, let's Over that dry chicken. <clears throat> and everything. <laughs> so we fall asleep. In the middle of the night, I wake up to use the restroom. And when I use the restroom, the other girl wakes up and she goes and I guess gets a late night snack. And when she sees me, she says, hi. I say, hi back. Keep it moving. She wakes up. She's like, oh, hell no, y'all yeah, tried me. I'm moving. like, wait. Yeah, well, how we moving. tried you? And then she's like, they were in there. Why? All of, but how long? I'm hearing laughing and and kiki king in the background. I'm thinking it's the TV from like next door. Mr. Rossi, like that. You the one that set this up, girl. Why you take your man to some other woman's house that's cooking? I don't care if the chicken is dry or not. What? That's gonna be a problem. Your Honor, she was she, dreaming, talking listen. about. She heard laughter. No, no, Only no. thing she heard was a toilet flush. No, no, no. I don't no, no, care no, no. what she heard. Miss DeRossier, you set this in motion. Why'd you do such a thing? She looked, she, I feel like she was really trying to use me to get to him. Uh, duh. Yeah, for sure. She was doing that. But she made it seem like she was really interested in me at first and then realized that I had a man and said, okay, well, I'm interested in both of y'all. I'm assuming, Mr. Henry, you put a kibosh on the throuples from oh, yeah, then on. I told her. I said, no, nah, I said, I'm good off of these because <laughs> I'm was, good off like, of them. Like I said, <laughs> toxic. The chick ended up wanting me or liking me more than she did with her. She just so wasn't I was like, a yeah, good I don't want to deal with this. She wasn't a good fit. That's what it was. So I check her phone and then I look through and I see text messages and I'm like, what's this? When are you gonna give him this proposition? He's stubborn. What was the hairdresser talking about? She's often proposed the idea that, you know, she be, you know, the third to our relationship. And I laugh and I, I'm like, you know this is funny, right? Because you know it's not gonna happen. But now I understand there's a new friend that has exactly. been brought into the picture. There was a new friend, yes. And basically, you know, how that story went was I'm at work, I call her on my break, and she didn't pick up. I didn't really think nothing of it. I was like, okay, maybe she's busy. Call her again, a girl picks up. I'm like, this ain't my girl, who's this? She's like, oh, hi, I'm Mona Lisa, I'm her new friend. I'm like, new friend? Like, uh, okay, cool, uh, nice to meet you. Where's Ferry? Put her on the phone. I'm like, I hope you're not trying to do what you're trying to do again, what you, you know, I'm, I'm good. And then she was like, oh no, it's nothing. You know, you don't have to really, and I was like, it was nothing. just before I get home, please let her be gone. I don't wanna. It was nothing. I don't wanna deal with it. So you told Mr. Rossier, I don't wanna set up, I don't wanna meet nobody. Right. I'm not even going down this path. Whatever's happening, please let her be out of the crib when I get there, basically. Exactly. Well, when I walked in the door this time around, she wasn't there. Okay. But so I was like, okay, that's good. Fine. But there was another situation where. Another thing. So I don't usually check her phone, but I was like, you know, let me see if I'm she's really. My phone. If she's that's really. That's what y'all do. Talking to <laughs> Young Mona, Mona, Mona Lisa phone. chick. Y'all check each other's phones. Don't even try it. I mean, y'all, that's she, what y'all do. I don't I give got my code. I got her code. Y'all hack each other's passwords. be just checking it for the If I got everyone arrested that checked everybody's phone, I wouldn't have no cases because all of y'all be going to jail. Next. They just all, that's what y'all do. Y'all check She got my code. I got her code. So I have nothing to hide. So it don't matter to me. But, so I check her phone and then I look through and I see text messages and I'm like, okay, what's this? So I look through the messages, I scroll up and then I see she sent um, a message saying, oh, did you let him know about the proposition yet? And then she says, oh, nah, he's too stubborn. That's what her response was. And I'm like, 
we know that already. I've expressed to you that you're stubborn about the situation. So wait, I wouldn't, wait, I wouldn't try to propose wait, that idea again. Unless that proposition was for her to help him get his locks refreshed. Mm. What was the hairdresser talking about? She's often proposed the idea that, you know, she be, you know, the third to our relationship. And I've always told her, like, no, he's not with it. And we laugh it off and we just, you know, move on. It's, Ain't no, it's nothing. Did you? I, mean, I, I joke it, about it. it honestly, we really court, joke honest, about so it. Let me, let me see the evidence proof. myself. I'd actually like to evaluate it. May I please? When are you going to give him this proposition? He's stubborn. So she says, boo. As in, I'm disappointed. Yeah. Pretty much. And I laugh and I, I'm like, you know this is funny, right? Because you know it's not gonna happen. Why would you be entertaining an option of an alternative lifestyle with your hairdresser friend who you say is only a friend? Let's live in your truth now or stand in your caughtness, one or the well, other. Well, we talk about our lives and our relationships. You know, that's what we do. When we're like, she's doing my hair, that's one of the things but that Mr. we talk Rossier, about. you just stated to me he had no reason to be concerned about your relationship because she was, quote, just a friend, she's your hairdresser. So I it mean, sounds to me that this is a young woman that you are interested in making a part no. of your relationship. I'm not interested. And he doesn't have anything to worry about because I wouldn't do anything well, unless he's more. okay with it. There's more? She sent her like a nip slip picture. It's harmless. I don't really believe you. I understand that the two of you are permitting me to ask Miss Mona Lisa Charlesine to join us. Have you and Mr. Rossier been romantically involved at all? We were having a good time, so we started kissing. Um, if you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. There's more. I found something else. What did you message. find? Oh, my God. Uh, a picture. She sent her, like, a nip slip picture. And then it was like, oh, you're gonna... Yeah, it's right there. Evidence right there. And I was like, well, what is this? Hey, babe, photograph. Want to... That's a proposition to Mr. Rossier. And Mr. Rossier responds, you look so on fire and happy and... I can't wait. <laughs> I mean, in my business, that's called evidence. I mean, we're just, we just, we're just carefree. We're like open, and he knows that about me. I'm a free spirit, and I could be like naked in front of my homegirls, and it's just nothing. It, it's nothing. Like we're getting dressed, we're going on a night out. It means nothing. It's harmless. You, you know what? I'm gonna ask those questions because I don't really believe you. I'm looking you in the face. I don't believe you. So, I understand that the two of you are permitting me to ask Miss Mona Lisa Charlesine to join us. Hello. Hi, Miss Charlesine. Thank you so very much for joining Divorce Court today. Tell me your name for the court and your relationship to the defendant, if you don't mind. Hello, my name is Mona Lisa Charlesine, and I am Ferry's hairdresser. Okay, Miss Charlesine. The plaintiff has stated that he's seen some messages between you and the defendant, and I just looked at them. They look kind of risque. Okay, so I started doing fairy's hair about six months ago, and we started getting close ever since. The first time I was doing her hair, I was flirting with her. You know, she was flirting back, but it was nothing really serious because she had already told me that her boyfriend, Wesley, is not okay with any of what I have going on. So, therefore, I was joking with her, joking with her, and we was just joking back. One thing led to another, but it was really nothing serious at all. Fair. I think that's absolutely fair. Let me cut to the chase and ask a question. One thing led to another. Have you and Mr. Rossier been romantically involved at all? 
A second um, attempt had happened at an Airbnb that she had, and she had decorated so beautiful for him, and I was supposed to meet him there. Well, he came to the Airbnb. He wasn't really excited to see me or nothing. He just looked and went up, um, up to the room. So she followed. When she came back, we were drinking, watching TV, you know, having a good time. So we started kissing, touching, but what? it never got that she does have a lot of respect no. for her man. Y'all um, kiss? Look, in my defense, we did, we pop kiss. But you still kissed her. She kissed me. And you ain't never told me this. Miss Chalcine, since that incident at the Airbnb, have there been any other romantic link-ups? Not really, but I do like her a lot, and I came here to divorce court today to tell her to make a decision. It's either she's going to speak to me and him, or she could speak to me on her own time and speak to him on his own time. So, in other words, you clearly are staking your claim. You're interested in a relationship. Am I correct? If I am. Ms. Charlene, I appreciate you being honest and 100% on what your intention is. Your intention is to be upfront so that there is no mistake. Am I correct, ma'am? Correct. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate that. Like, I have every intentions on marrying this girl. Like, I really do. You actually brought a ring? I actually did. Mr. Rossi, you started this by saying to me, Your Honor, this is my soulmate. This is the love of my life. This is who I want. So then you need to step up, young lady. Is this the man that you want? Or are you about to play around with Miss Charlene and the next Miss Charlene? Because there'll be another if you're not getting what you want in a relationship. Yes, Your Honor, he's who I want to be with. I want to spend the rest of my life with him. So you, when are you going to stop being sneaky, tricky, and being somebody that he can't trust? Because that's what I just saw. Are you ready for that? Now, I you am. have every right to I say am. I am not. I am. I am ready, which is why I've always communicated to him, except that little detail. That's of a what, big what detail. Take responsibility. Take accountability. You may be younger, but you are not that young that you can't stand in your own space. And by the way, if you're not ready to commit to a monogamous relationship, it is okay. You can say I'm not ready, but you cannot put one foot in and one foot out. That's just not right. It's mean. It's sneaky. It's hurtful. And I don't get the sense that that's the human being that you want to be. I mean, it's not. I mean, I want to stay with him. I want to be with him. Forever. I don't want to hurt him anymore. So if this is something that he's not interested in, hopefully one day he might be, but he's if it's not, not then interested. We'll just leave You're it. Honest, we'll just leave it where thing, it is. The only other person or anything in our relationship is our dog. Until we have kids, it's going to be our dog Smokey. That's, That's what you get when you go with Mr. Henry. He wants the two, three kids. He wants a dog or two. He wants to make a wife and a family. He wants to grow his business. He wants to be secure in his future. And I'm gonna put this to you as bluntly as I can. There's a whole lot of women that would want that. And if you don't step up, it's gonna be about 20 minutes that it's gonna be a whole lot of women saying to him, I want what you offer. You ready to step up or not? Because if you're not ready, let him go. I am ready, and I told him that. Mr. Henry, this is up to he you. Knows. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, there is no way in the world that I would make somebody my wife until I was sure they wanted me as my husband. Well, Robert, I'm not sure that he will ever be enough for her. You know, a key moment for me when I was listening to the case, she tells the hairdresser, he's just being uh, stubborn. Yeah. She's not ready. No, not at all, because he's not being stubborn. He knows exactly what he wants. And if she can't give it to him, I'm telling you, he will have a boatload of women waiting to keep, take him up on his offer. Keep that ring in your pocket for now. 100%.
made in Georgia.